From the start, Weathering Wave's odd mix of swords, guns, and spirits sets the stage for its apocalyptic battlefront, somehow combining disparate ideas into a combat spectacle. Let the winds roar. This story-driven gotcha RPG will have you twirling like a ballerina, dodging attacks, and then passing the baton to a teammate to slam the enemy with a fish-like dragon. Unfortunately, while those flashy, fast-paced fights and its parkour-like movement are exciting, Weathering Waves also fails to impress in a few other key areas, like its lackluster story that makes the skip button look tempting at times. So you don't know why you're here, where you're from, or who you are. Wind Rider. Weathering Waves is all about action. Every character has an element and weapon type associated with them, as well as individual skills that you can level up. However, how you use those characters isn't quite a copy-paste of similar action RPGs like Genshin Impact. That's thanks in part to the intro and outro skills that can be used when you swap between each character in your three-person team. Watch and learn! Which activate cool special attacks like a fire-infused shootout. You also charge up a separate skill gauge by dishing out damage or successfully dodging and parrying enemy attacks. Moment of resonance. And these systems add an appreciated layer of strategy to how you build your party and when exactly to change teammates. It's a little disappointing that the elemental system is essentially just a palette swap between characters, but their actual movesets are still varied enough that experimenting with team comps is quite fun. I'm fired up. Gear is also not quite what you'd expect. Rather than using traditional equipment like helmets and gloves, you strengthen your characters with Echoes, animal-like companions that increase your attack, elemental damage, and so on. The strength of those buffs depends on how many of the same type you equip at once, and each Echo takes up some of the limited space in your equipment slots. These restrictions encourage you to figure out how to squeeze in the most buffs you can, even if that means temporarily using Echoes with suboptimal stats. The best part about Echoes is how they tie into the environment. As you fight enemies and bosses, they'll sometimes leave behind ghost-like shells of themselves for you to absorb and convert into echoes. That makes exploration more appealing because finding different types of monsters could mean getting access to new kinds of buffs. Not only does this system reward you with interesting gear for your characters, it encourages you to fill out your map as you go. Bulldozing through the same enemies over and over again to collect echoes can start to feel repetitive after a few dozen hours, but at least they also get you points in a collection tracking guidebook as well as a battle pass full of rewards. So there are reasons to hunt them beyond just upping your stats. Gotta catch them all. Even when happily farming, one part of Weathering Waves that totally falls flat is its story. Developer Kuro Games has openly spoken about how it had to revamp the entire story ahead of launch. And sadly, the version we ultimately got still falls short with uneven pacing and too much exposition. The beginning is full of unnatural, lengthy conversations that use cryptic terminology you need to look up in encyclopedias and loading screens to actually understand. And it doesn't get any more compelling once you do. Oh, by Pangu Terminal, she means the gourd-shaped device every resonator has. Your main character follows the classic trope of an amnesiac protagonist that seemingly appears out of nowhere, with a generic story that revolves around the secrets of their past. That can work if done right, but this setup feels confusing and undeserved because of all the history and jargon thrown at you without any explanation as to how all of it connects. Things start to clear up in the later acts of the first chapter, only for it to introduce more characters that divide your attention before you even get to know them. And it doesn't help that the voice acting sounds borderline monotone across the board, even during intense cutscenes. I'm fine too. I've never seen such a formidable tacit discord before. Side quests don't do much to deepen the connection between the characters and the setting either. You can witness the dangers of this apocalyptic environment, like dying NPCs and comrades that melodramatically tell you to go on without them. But there's nothing that truly makes you think anyone important will get hurt. Anyway, please allow me to introduce myself. I am Tao Chi. Small things, like the very few moments when your hero suddenly speaks despite otherwise being largely silent, are also jarring. At some points, it's enough to just make you want to mash buttons and quickly skip through a tedious conversation, or leave a scene on autoplay in the background. 
Kura Games occasionally attempts more meaningful side quests, like one about a monster mourning its mate and a researcher who similarly lost their partner, but not enough of them stand out. You are alright, it seems. These memorable quests are more of a rarity than the norm. Even when you have big side quests waiting to be completed after the roughly 20 hour main story, the large text blocks that always accompany them make them daunting to get started. Playing through these missions for their rewards alone is at least a compelling incentive, because they won't exactly have you perched on the edge of your seat expecting some big surprise. Oh, thank goodness. Thankfully, the rewards for climbing the ranks are tantalizing enough on their own. Weathering Waves uses a fairly standard gotcha system where you trade in-game currency for random character and weapon pulls, complete with the usual pity system to make sure you eventually get a high quality reward. That said, this pity system is more generous than many other games in the genre, only taking 80 gotcha pulls to get a guaranteed 5 star character or item, versus the 90 plus you'll generally see. It also offers tons of free resources during the initial honeymoon phase too, handing out dozens of pulls whenever you climb 10 or so ranks alongside other systems that make them particularly easy to earn at the beginning. You're even guaranteed to get at least one random 5 star character right away, plus another 5 star character of your choice after 80 pulls. And on top of that, Wuthering Waves is handing out a free pass that will be available until next year for another 5 star character. That means you could have at least two top tier fighters in your party within the first few hours of playing, and a third if you stick around for a couple more. This flower is for you. I hope it makes you happy. You're still at the luck of the draw beyond that, but it feels generous out of the gate, especially for any gacha game fans burnt out on bad pulls elsewhere. Some of the characters do feel underpowered compared to others, which is sort of inevitable in games where the cast grows over time like this. However, Weathering Waves does its best to offer future-proof free-to-play characters that'll make it easier to build optimized rotations without having to constantly keep up with the new releases. You unlock six four-star characters for free through the story that can charge your party's energy, strengthen their attacks, and heal as needed. Commence healing. It's great that this foundation, plus those guaranteed five-star characters, make it so that beginners can start building strong team comps that feel satisfying right away. Moment of resonance. Weathering Wave's combat-heavy action, quick movement, and enticing echo collection enhance combat and exploration enough to let it respectably stand out from its competitors. Storm, hear that command! The fights are polished and sophisticated, rewarding reactivity and optimal builds and teams. On top of that, the Echo equipment system ties your character progression into the environment in a way that encourages you to uncover every inch of the map, which can be satisfying despite the repetitive process of fighting overworld mobs. Unfortunately, the story is a bland, exposition-heavy slog with dull writing and voice acting. The terminal can then convert its reverberation into an echo for use in battle. So while the quests aren't its main draw, Weathering Waves is still worth looking into as a refreshing spin on the typical open-world gacha RPG. For more, check out our recent reviews of Disney Dreamlight Valley or the Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door remake. And for everything else, stick with IGN.